hi, let's get right into this. All the ingredients are in the description of the video. So I'm starting off melting about four to five tablespoons of coconut oil. So as soon as that's heated up, in with a star anise, a piece of cassia bark, and a black cardamom. Really good um, spice combo for meat recipes. And we just want to um, roast those for about a minute to extract all their essential oils into the oil. Apologies about the state of my cooker. It's been quite a busy morning. Anybody that's been following the channel uh, will see a number of videos I've posted. But anyway, without further ado, let's just let that heat up. We'll come back shortly. That's smelling really great. Next, I've got some large shallots that I'm just going to sweat down for about three minutes, just so the edges are starting to uh, take on some colour. If you haven't got any shallots, simply use onion, but shallots are really good, nice natural sweetness, a good amount of uh, flavour in there. The onions are nearly done. Next we can add some green whole chilies. They're good to get the acidity into a dish when you're using them whole and they can be discarded um, while you're eating it if it's a bit too hot. Not a problem. Next, two tablespoons of ginger and garlic paste and I've already added the salt to that so salt is always to taste. Don't let anybody dictate to you how much salt you could use because it's an acquired taste but it's really important to use salt because it balances flavours out. So on top of that no need to um, dilute it. I'm using about three tablespoons of tomato puree, about a teaspoon and a half of extra hot chili powder and you're simply the best, better than all the rest. I'm not very good at singing but we've got some mixed powder there that I'm going to be using about a tablespoon and a half. This is serving uh, about four portions so let's give that a good stir. The fragrance is overwhelming in a good way. Sizzling the raw flavours out of the tomato and the spices, the ginger and garlic, etc. So a good blast on that for about a minute and a half. So my 400 millilitres of base gravy is in the microwave heating up. That's charring around the edges just how I like it. Now we've got some pre-cooked lamb along with the stock and some fat. I'll put my um, recipe up or the link of the recipe to pre-cooked lamb in the description of the video. So I'll give that a good stir now and just want to heat that lamb up. Nice and glistening and juicy. Just want that to come to a really good heat now. So a British Indian restaurant, the lamb dan sack obviously cooked my way. Every restaurant will be different. No two recipes are ever the same. But if I was cooking in a restaurant this is very similar to how I'd do it. So, nice and hot. I'm adding all the base gravy in. Overloading the pan a little, but that's fine. I'm really lucky with this cooker actually. It's got a nice high heat, which is quite unusual for domestic cookers in the UK. So I give that a good stir and let it come to a really good temperature once again. So it's heating up nicely. I've got some oil splitting. When I look at that, I think, uh, do we really need to add the lentils? But no, this is a Dansak recipe. So pre-cooked dal, about for this quantity, so about 600 gram of lamb and 400 mils of base gravy. So we're looking at about three good cups of lentil there. And my lentil, I've put a link to the recipe in the description, as I mentioned. Uh, has a little bit of spinach in and it has a whole load of other spices in 
so we're getting a double impact on the spices here we'll come back once that's had a good stir starting to heat up now after a good mix see the quantity of lemon I'm using an ab absolutely huge lemon just a slice from it so I recommend um, the juice of one lemon so I'm going to be squeezing that off camera they're very fragrant with the lemon next just some garam masala just about a teaspoon and give that a good stir and continue to simmer down for a further 10 minutes oh that's uh, really hot and steamy it's been bubbling away for about 10 minutes it's reduced by about a centimeter it's probably about 500 millilitres with a diameter of the pan that much and I've got plenty of splashing up and um, the cooker to clean again but besides the point um, always allow something like that to rest especially with the lentils because it, when it's hot it looks really wet and liquidy you let it rest 10 minutes and it will thicken up so we'll come back and have a look at a portion um, when it's ready to serve so there's just one portion and that's what we get for our efforts it's got a very nice rich gravy just uh hard to describe it it's so tasty the the aroma in the kitchen's amazing the taste of it's great it's nice and spicy so thank you very much for watching feel free to like share and subscribe stay safe